In this lesson, we'll be creating a setup sheet. After completing this lesson, you'll be able to create a setup sheet. Let's carry on with the file from our previous example, and the last step in our process that we're going to explore with this part is the creation of a setup sheet. Now once we have setup1 selected inside of our browser, we can right click on it, and we have the option to create a setup sheet. This can also be found under the action section and setup sheet. By selecting either of these, it'll prompt you for a folder location. I'm going to go ahead and navigate to the location of my data set and then save our file there. Once I've selected my data set folder, I'll use the select folder option, and then an HTML file is going to be created for me. The HTML file will contain a few things. The first of which the job description will be the name of our setup, in this case the default setup1. The document path will be the name of our file, Optical Pickup, as well as the version it's currently saved as. We'll get a screenshot of the current view that we're looking at. So in this case, since we had Setup1 selected, we have a view of our stock and the part. You'll also notice that in this case, the coordinate system is cut off because of the view of my part. So in order to get that inside of my view, I'll have to make sure I go back and I have the part completely in view so I can see the coordinate system location. The next thing that we'll notice is the WCS number zero, which by default will go to G54, the stock size, the part dimension, the stock, in this case it says lower in WCS, and it gives us the location of, in this case, our WCS zero. And then you can see again some more stock and upper WCS values. As we go down, it tells us the total number of operations, in this case 32, it is including the patterns that we created the number of tools used, the tool number, the minimum and maximum Z travel values. You'll notice that we're going down to minus 1.05. This is going to allow us to go down through those small pockets that are in the circular bore area. Then it gives us the maximum feed rate, the maximum spindle speed, the total distance for cutting and rapid, the estimated cycle time. So in this case, the estimated cycle time to cut this entire part for all 32 operations is just under an hour. Then it's going to go through and it's going to give us specific information about the tools and this is going to be based on the information that's saved in our tool library. So you'll notice that the right hand tap didn't contain a holder so the preview on the screen just shows the tap itself. However some of the other tools such as the chamfer mill did contain a very specific holder in this case so you'll notice that it gives you the information about that holder tells you that it's 5 8 and it has a three and a half inch plus extension. Then it also gives you the product number, so the part number of that holder. So this is all very important information and this information is going to help us identify the tools that need to be loaded into the machine. So as we look inside of here, it also gives us information such as the length that the tool is extending from the holder, the minimum Z value that's being used, and as we go down, you can see tool number eight. The length is 1.375. The minimum Z value that it goes down to is minus 1.05 inches. Now remember our coordinate system is at the top of the stock. So these values are going down from the top of the stock. And as we go down again, it just has more information. It tells you the estimated cycle time for that tool. Uh, it gives you specific information about each holder. And then it breaks down each operation. And this is very important information because it tells you which operation uses which tool. And it's also a great idea to check out the order of operations. So you can see all the half inch tools are used first, then the quarter inch flat end mill. And as we scroll down, you can see that the quarter inch is used a lot. And then ultimately we get down to using the chamfer mill. We used it a few times because again, it is including each operation in those patterns. And then we get into the drill and the tap. So this document is a very important step in the process, especially if you are not the one that will be running the machine. So this information gives anybody running the machine critical knowledge on the tools used, the estimates on how long the program will actually take, which operations the tools are being used in, specifics about how far the tools stick out of the holder, and the max travel of each of those tools. So let's go ahead and let's close this file we're going to go back into Fusion 360 and we're going to export this one more time. 
So back in Fusion 360, our home view does not get the corner of our stock in view. So we're going to zoom out and make sure that we can see the location of that coordinate system. Then with Setup 1 still selected, we'll go to Actions and select Setup Sheet. And again, we'll navigate to that same folder location and we'll create this document one more time. So this document will be identical to the last one with the one exception being the screenshot we have inside of the setup area. So now we can see the entire part and we can see the location of the coordinate system. So this box here is going to be our modeling window with the exception that it does not contain the browser and any information on the side of the screen. So just ensure that when you create this document, you double check that your screenshot is okay and that you can actually see the coordinate system location because that information will be critical to somebody setting up this part. Once we're back in Fusion 360, there's nothing else that we really need to do at this point because the file's already saved, the setup sheet HTML document's been created, and we've already exported this code. So at this point, once you're done manipulating any properties in here that you want to play with, Go ahead and close this file and move on.